roll-up sides. The daunting roll-up sides. How do you get them secured consistently the full length of the tunnel? How do you get them to roll up evenly? How do you get them to rest securely on the baseboard? And how do you get them to stay against the structure when winds are coming? We'll touch on some of these things when I'm showing you uh, how to put together the roll-up sides, and maybe they won't look so daunting. If you've ever scoped out any of the high tunnels or greenhouses around you, trying to figure out how you want to make your roll-up sides, you've probably noticed that there's a lot of different handles and cranks that are at the end of them. Regardless of the type of handles and cranks used, uh, most roll-up sides include a very limited number of pieces of hardware and components and this video is going to take you through them and how to assemble. The main component of any roll-up side is a roll bar and in this situation it's steel tubing uh, one and three inch diameter and you're going to make sure that the roll-up tubing can connect to itself. So what we have here is a swaged end which is slightly smaller and it fits easily inside an unswaged end. Eventually this is where you'll secure the tube with self-tapping screws. In addition to the roll bar, you're going to need an operator. And in this case, it's a gearbox, um, but a handle also works because the concepts are the same. But for this particular tutorial, we're using a gearbox operator, which means in addition to the gearbox, you're going to need a guide pipe. And a guide pipe uh, is what the gearbox will move up and down on. We'll get to that later. Uh, to secure the plastic to the roll bar, you're going to need snap clamps, uh, which uh, you know I've linked into the description. Uh, not only snap clamps, but all the materials used in this video. So let's get into some of the steps here. Uh, you're going to have your roll bar, uh, your contiguous pieces of 1 and 3 8 inch tube laid out and if you bought a kit from us one end of one of your bars will have a pre-drilled hole like the one you see here and this is where your gearbox operators will go on and this is only applicable if you bought a tunnel with gearbox operators. If this is the case and you bought gearbox operators, you're going to want to position your roll bar so that this hole is on whatever end of the structure that you plan on cranking up and down on. Now, if you don't have a gearbox operator, you'll have a handle here. Uh, that's okay. The same thought process uh, pursues. You know, you'll, you'll pick the end with your handle on it or your gearbox operator, and then you'll install these units on the roll bar before you even put the plastic on. So you can see here, this is the end that will... Uh, operate the uh, roll-up sides on in the future. Now, let's assemble the roll bar. Slide the swaged end of the tube into the unswaged end of the tube. Uh, here's a close-up of what that might look like. And you'll do this at every joint, the full length of your tunnel, no matter how long your tunnel is. And you're going to use these pan head screws. Uh, if you bought a kit from us, they're uh, most likely going to be square drive uh, pan head screws. And you can drive through the unswaged tube into the swage itself to connect them. And in this situation here you can see I'm driving two screws. Uh, you can also flip the, the tube around if you want to uh, secure one of the screws on the opposite side. You could do three screws if you if you so want. But for our kits we're driving two screws there. And then you'll do this uh, at every point where there's a connection, the full length of the tunnel and on each side. So at this point you'll pull your plastic on the tunnel. Uh, you know, theoretically, you could wait until the plastic's on the tunnel to do the roll bar assembly. However, um, if you want to get everything zipped up tightly as soon as possible, I would preemptively assemble your roll bar like I did in the last step. Your plastic is on. It's been secured at the hip rail with spring wire. Your roll-up bar is connected to itself, uh, the full length of the tunnel, and you have the crank hardware already installed. Now it is time to set the roll bar on top of the excess plastic that remains on your side. So you can see here I'm just lifting up the roll bar, putting it on the, the plastic. I'm being careful, you know, not to uh, rip, cut, break the plastic, but you can see it's pretty forgiving. You're just setting the roll bar on the plastic as it uh, rests on the ground. Before we can secure the plastic to the roll bar, we have to make sure the roll bar is in the correct position. And as mentioned before, this particular tunnel gets a gearbox, which is shown there. We have to make sure that it lines up appropriately with its guide post. So what we're going to do now is we're going to rough in the guide pipe. And you don't want it to be too far off the tunnel. As you can see there, we want the guide pipe to rest so that it's parallel the full length from the top to the bottom of the guide pipe. Kind of uh, as I've positioned right, you know, right about 
here. So that's where the, the uh, gearbox needs to line up with. So we're going to push the entire roll bar so that it lines up in an even line with the gearbox. Not only are you going to line the gearbox up with the guide pipe, you're going to push the gearbox itself up against the end hoop and you're going to make sure that the fastener holding it all together doesn't hit that end hoop. Uh, that way, you know, it won't be damaging the plastic as it's rolling up and down over time. Now, if you have a, a roll upside handle, you're going to do the same thing. You just want to make sure that the fasteners that are securing your handle to the roll bar uh, aren't going to hit the end hoop, you know, damaging the plastic over time. So here we are, we got that set up. Now I know where this is going to be. There's too much plastic. So, uh, of course, I need to trim this and and this is a very, you know, critical moment. Uh, be careful not to trim too much plastic off of your, uh, your side panels here. Um, you can see I'm kind of taking my time to cut around the gearbox, but I know that I need to have the plastic removed. Uh, otherwise, this will not roll up at all. So even though I've sped up this portion of the video so that it moves along a little quicker, I'm actually taking more time uh, so I don't cut you know within the actual roll up side itself on accident while trimming here so I'm going to just trim up uh, making sure that I leave a little excess but uh, I want to make it so that the gearbox can move freely as well so let's take a look at what we got here we have the gearbox there secured where it needs to be the plastic has been trimmed to allow the gearbox to move up and down and now we're going to place snap clamps in between each hoop the full length of the tunnel. So for every uh, section we have, we're using a, a snap clamp. In this case, it's a one and three eight inch snap clamp. Let's take a closer look at what these snap clamps look like when they're set in between each hoop section. You can see here, they all look the same. There's one individual snap clamp in between each section of hoop. To start securing the snap clamps to your roll bar, we're gonna find the middle section. So here we are at the middle section uh, along your roll-up side. And we've got the tube on top of the plastic. The snap clamp has been staged. We have a four foot wide hoop spacing and we're just gonna find the middle of that four foot hoop spacing. So right around that area here. And we're just gonna try to create a consistent distance between the baseboard and where the snap clamp is secured. And to do that, we like to use these. These are pliers with a soft handle end, and we use these as a spacer to create the uh, space we need between the baseboard and the roll-up side. Take note that the soft end of the pliers are pushed firmly underneath the baseboard lip, and the hard end of the pliers are pushed against the roll-up tube, and this will be wh where you secure your snap clamp. So this is how far away your roll bar will be from your baseboard. So as we adjust and make sure we're confident in the spacing, we're going to push on a snap clamp. And using equal pressure and being careful not to push too hard and puncture the plastic, we just slide it right over top. And here's the finished product for what one snap clamp will look like once it's attached to the roll bar. And now we're going to move down the full length of the structure, securing snap clamps in the same exact way uh, in between each hoop section. Now the reason we use a spacer that comes off of the baseboard to set where we want your roll-up bar to be has to do with the fact that when you do it in this way, as you roll it up, it's going to rest on the baseboard the full length of the structure evenly. Just like as shown in this picture, as you can see the roll bar as it's rolled up is resting on the baseboard itself. Now this is very important as you're hoping to create some form of weather seal uh, between the, the air outside and the inside of your structure. So you want it to line up with the baseboard itself. With that in mind, here I am continuing down the full length of the structure, spacing off of the baseboard using my uh, pliers that I've been using as a spacer. Let me just pause for one second here and say that you do not need to use a pair of pliers for your spacer if you find something or have something that you think will work better. Just make sure that whatever spacer you use won't damage the plastic and won't be so big that it pushes you off the actual plastic excess. Now back to what I was doing. And uh, just working my way from one end to the other and uh, we're gonna get all those snap clamps in place and then we're gonna trim the excess plastic off uh, so that we have about four inches of plastic remaining between uh, the full length edge and the snap clamps we just installed. Be careful at this step not to uh, allow the scissors to cut closer to the roll bar 
uh, in between the snap clamps. So just remember, as you're, you're pulling on the plastic and trimming here, uh, there is a distance of around four feet in between each snap clamp. And so as you're trimming, you may not know that you're actually getting closer to the roll bar than you actually want. So th that's one of the things you'll look for when you're trimming uh, the full length of the excess plastic. Now we're all trimmed up. We're at the end of the roll bar. Let's test this thing and see how it rolls up. If you have a gearbox like we do here, you're going to grab the gearbox and rotate the entire gearbox, which will rotate the entire roll up. And you're going to rotate it just as I am here until you can get to a point where you can slide the guide pipe into the gearbox to keep it from unraveling on you. And you'll just kind of temporarily hook it into uh, the open eye bolt that's attached to your hoop. So let's test this thing. I'm cranking up with the handle here. Uh, this is a 24 inch crank handle and here's a close up. So we're just looking to see how evenly it rolls up the full length of the tunnel. And we're going to take our time to roll all the way to the top uh, so that it's just a few inches below the hip rail. And then we're going to roll it all the way back down to the bottom to make sure that it rests evenly on the baseboard itself. Having the roll-up side rest evenly on the baseboard is probably the most critical moment as far as determining when your roll-up side can be permanently secured in place. So let's take a look at the full length here to see uh, how, how evenly it's resting on the baseboard from one end to the other. As you can see, it's resting on the baseboard uh, quite well, and there is a little bit of a lip uh, on the top of this metal baseboard that kind of cups it in place as well. So it's not just resting flat, it has some support behind. If your roll-up doesn't rest evenly on the baseboard, this is the time at which you have to unroll the side, readjust some of those snap clamps based on how it's resting on the baseboard, and then test it again. And uh, if you need to make these adjustments, just remember, it's worth spending 30 minutes messing around with the roll-up side now and readjusting things so that you can have four, five, six, seven years of appropriate operation uh, of the roll-up side. You don't want to have to operate these multiple times per day and then curse yourself for not just taking a few minutes to readjust a snap clamp um, and make everything as straight as you possibly can now. Um, I know it's frustrating, I know it's annoying, I know it's groundwork, you got to be, you know, walk around on the ground uh, with your knees or like, you know, it's going to be messy possibly in the mud, but just take the time to do it now and uh, you'll be happy in the long run. If you were pleased with where your roll-up sides rested, you still have to unroll it and expose the snap clamps so that you can permanently secure the snap clamps to your roll-up bar. Now, you, you probably could get away with not doing this, but it's good to have an extra layer of securement. So what we like to do is we like to kind of unravel it just in the opposite direction we did, and then we're going to drive a self-tapping screw, just a single one, and we make sure it is a pan head screw so that it won't really cause a lot of friction on the uh, plastic. And we do this on every single snap clamp the full length of the tunnel. And here we are just rolling it right back up. We already went through the process of securing the snap clamps to the roll bar itself. And once again, once we get it uh, to a point where uh, it can you know, rest above the baseboard, we're sliding that guide post, that guide pipe in there, and uh, getting to the point where it's uh, rolled up a little bit. You now have a roll-up side that can move up and down freely. And it's time to use uh, anti-billow strapping or ropes to hold it against the structure itself. And to do this, you'll have a few pieces of hardware, primarily easy snap hooks. If you bought a DIY kit from us, you'll receive a lock nut and the associated bolt. You'll just have to drill a quarter inch hole at each point where you want the easy snap hooks, which is uh, every other hoop. So in between every other hoop, you'll have an easy snap hook and you'll just offset it a little bit from the hoop so that you can get behind there with a uh, wrench or an impact driver to uh, secure the lock nut in place. That takes care of the hardware that you'll secure to your baseboard for the anti-billow system. You can use those same pieces of hardware for the top. They slide right into your double channel. However, you can also use something called a spring wire clip. Now, these are supplied with a lot of our DIY kits. And the spring wire clips wire in just like spring wire does. The spring wire clips are going to be installed in between the hoops uh, where you installed the easy snap hooks. And this is so you can create an up and down pattern through the full length of your tunnel to create an anti-billow rope system. Here's an example of how your spring wire clips and easy snap hooks will be installed in relation to each other in order to create the correct pattern. 
Notice how their spacing creates a nice every other hoop zigzag with the rope. Once you've secured your anti-billow rope, you are now able to operate your roll up side, roll it up and down, and rest assured that it won't blow around in the wind. Hopefully you found this video helpful as you navigate how to install roll up sides on your structure. And if you have questions about this process, please do leave us a comment and we'll try to get back to you as soon as we can. If you're interested in any of the materials used while we were making this video, uh, we'll have direct links in the description. And if you're interested in watching additional videos related to season extension and season extension structures, please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.